prepare yourselves. It's the Arrhenius equation. It's linked to rates, directly linked to rates. But what's it for? What's the point of it? Okay, you look at it and, you know, in maybe in a textbook or something, you, know, you just switch off. Okay, if you're not mathematically minded, and you know what? I don't mind admitting that I'm not necessarily mathematically minded. It can be a bit kind of overbearing, a bit overwhelming. So let's take a look at what it is and break it down and see if we can make some sense of it. So, you know what? It appears just that little bit less scary. So what do we already know? Well, we already know that rate can be affected by changes in concentration. So if that rate equals our rate constant K multiplied by the concentration of A to the power one, the concentration of B to the power two, or whatever our rate expression for that reaction might be. Well, where does the Arrhenius equation come in? Well, logically, we already know that catalysts, things that affect the activation energy of a reaction and changes in temperature can also affect rates. So in other words, can also affect the value for K, okay? So if you change the rate, the value of K can change as well. So you know what? It's not just concentration changes that can affect rate. What we're saying is that adding catalysts, in other words, lowering the activation energy maybe, and obviously changing the temperature, they can also affect rate. So we need an expression that can include, you know, what concentrations, it includes catalysts and includes or changes in activation energy and changes in temperature as well. And that's what the Arrhenius equation does. All right. So what is it? Well, it's K equals A E to the power minus activation energy over RT. You are. <laughs> All right. So it's like, what is it? Okay. That's why I say it looks scary, but you know what? We're going to break it down. We're going to take a look at what each of these individual components are. And, you know, I'll try some way explaining what they're in there for. So first and foremost, let's take a look at K. Of course, K we've met before. K is our rate constant. That's it. We know what our rate constant is. It links concentrations and orders of reaction with rate. Well, the capital A, that's our Arrhenius constant. You might see it kind of written down as the pre-exponential factor, but that's because it just it comes before the exponent, before the exponential factor. Speaking of which, the little e that we've got there, that's the exponential factor or the exponent. All right. Basically, it's the inverse of natural log on your calculator. So you'll see the uh, ln on your calculator. It's basically shift ln and that's the little e there. Now, the reason we've got this, I'll come to in a second, but I'll just de deal with the EA and the RT first. EA, we've seen before in rates, that's basically our activation energy. We know that the lower the activation energy, the easier it is for a reaction to occur, the faster the rate of reaction. Now, this is a bit of a weird one. R is our universal gas constant. Uh, you might wonder why that's in there. Don't ask, it just is, okay? But that's a standard, that's on our data sheet at 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. And T, of course, no prizes here. T stands for temperature, but of course, that is in Kelvin. So looking at how all these things are put together, well, what are we on about here, all right? Well, our Arrhenius constant, we'll come to that a bit later on, okay? But right now, I wanna to talk to you about this exponent. Now, this really comes into play, okay? We have this exponential factor because, you know what? There's a particular relationship between temperature and our rate constant, K. If we set up just a cheeky little kind of sketch graph over here of uh, temperature against our rate constant, K, we can see that if I put this line in here, we've got an exponential relationship. If we increase temperature, K increases exponentially. That's why we have to put this exponent into our equation. Okay, so that's the reason why that little e is in there, the inverse of natural log. Next thing, we've got to look at activation energy R and T. Well, activation energy makes sense, okay? The lower the activation energy, the faster the rate of reaction. That kind of stands on its own two feet there. But where does gas constant and temperature come in? Well, essentially you put these two together and this basically gives you the average kinetic energy of the molecules in the system. So those are our average kinetic energy when you multiply those two things together. We know from looking at Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curves, okay? Obviously the higher the temperature, 
the more kinetic energy our molecules have. The more kinetic energy they have, the more collisions you get, the more frequent the collisions, the more successful the collisions. So, you know, putting these two together is a really important thing because, you know, we can find our average kinetic energy. So the more the, or the greater the average kinetic energy, the faster the rate of reaction, okay? So what we've got here are two things. We've got our EA, that's our activation energy. We want that to be low for a fast rate and our average kinetic energy, we want that to be high, okay? So let's have a look at this little part of the equation here in the relationship and what that actually means. So the minus EA over RT bit. Essentially, this is just the ratio between activation energy and the average kinetic energy of the molecules. What we can say, like I said before, is that the lower the activation energy and the higher the kinetic energy, the faster the reaction. That makes sense, okay? So what we're looking at here is a small ratio for a fast reaction. Now that, okay, a small ratio, well, you'd think that would increase K, okay? But that's why we've got the negative thing in there, okay? So the negative EA, that takes into account, well, a small ratio is a good thing. We wanna flip that on its head because we want to increase K to make a fast reaction, okay? So the smaller the ratio between EA and RT or our kinetic energy, the faster the reaction. We put the negative sign in front of it because we want a large value for K. So that's why it's negative EA. So basically what this does is calculate the fraction of the molecules that possess enough energy to react. Essentially, that's what it is. And you know what? I'll put that in blue down here. I think that's important. Essentially, the exponential minus EA over RT calculates the fraction of molecules that possess enough energy to react. Of course, we need to take that into account because we need to know, you know, how fast is a reaction going to be? Well, it depends on how many molecules have enough energy to react. That's essentially what we're saying, okay? So that's that kind of uh, exponential minus EA over RT bit. So that's why it's there. Don't worry though, you're not gonna have to explain that in an exam. I just you know, will give you an idea of what this is all about to make it look a little bit less scary. So this is that exponential uh, minus EA over RT bit. Well, what the heck is this about, this Arrhenius constant? Um, well, let's take a look at that. Well, our Arrhenius constant, or as some people might say this pre-exponential factor, that accounts for the fraction of molecules that would react if our activation energy was zero. Now, this is a highly unlikely scenario, but we need to put it in there just to take into account that that might happen, okay? So between the two, between this Arrhenius constant, we account for the molecules that would react if activation energy was zero and the exponential EART bit, where we're accounting for the fraction of molecules that have enough energy to react. We take into account both of those things, then we've got our rate constant, okay? We know how much that's going to be. So our Arrhenius equation does take into account changes in temperature, and activation energy. That's essentially what it does. And in this version here, okay, that's the kind of like classic version of the Arrhenius equation, but you know what? You're more likely to come across it in a slightly different way. Now, what I mean is that you can take the natural log, the LN, okay, of both sides. And what that does, it removes that exponent. What we're doing is we're taking this curve here, the exponential that accounts for this uh, temperature uh, rate constant curve, and we just eliminate it by taking the natural log of both sides. And it starts to look just a little bit more friendly in terms of an equation. So what we have is ln k, we've taken the natural log of k equals minus Ea over Rt. It's just that because like I said, this E has just been eliminated. So ln k equals minus Ea over Rt plus the natural log of A, ln A, all right? So the natural log of our Arrhenius constant. Now this comes into play a little bit more, especially when we start looking at it in the graphical sense, okay? And we're gonna take a look at that in the next tutorial. But essentially the Arrhenius equation, 
If anything that you take away from this, is basically taking into account changes in activation energy and changes in temperature because they can also affect K. Explaining this bit, hopefully you understand this. It just gives you a better idea of what this is all about. It doesn't look so scary that way. Taking into account, obviously, activation energy and the number of molecules that have enough energy to react. And this A here, you know what? It's just there, all right? This is our Arrhenius constant. A lot of the time, they are going to ask us to calculate this with a rearrangement. But you know what? That's for the next tutorial, all right? So this is not scary. You won't need to explain it, but just have a general idea of what it's showing us and what it's about, and it will help your understanding and a way forward as, as to uh, answering the questions on this, okay? So your Arrhenius equation introduction is this.